all right so welcome back welcome back to my channel and this time what i want to do is because i was working on the pokemon q game like super hard uh and i built this elevator in there and i wanted to show y'all how to build an elevator because i've seen how to build an elevator on other channels but yet they didn't do like the whole elevator and i want to just take you all the way through the process with the doors opening and all so let's build an elevator Bow. Okay, so in order to build an elevator, so say I am the player, and I'm here, and I need to get down there. How am I going to do that? I need an elevator. So let's build a working elevator. And the first thing you want to do is open up your blueprints, and let's add a new one. So right-click blueprint class actor, and we're going to call this elevator, underscore BP. And then you double-click on it, obviously. Go in here, let's add a plane. So add a plane, and this is going to be our ground. You can just keep it called plane or ground or whatever you want to call it. But compile and save. Let's make the let's make it seven by seven. That way, it can look you know, it should be you know nice and should be a nice size. So where's our player at? Right here. Let's drop that elevator. Or the ground floor elevator right there into here now notice this um, location of the or the world location right here of this elevator it says Z 950 so we need to get down at least 949 you know I'm saying somewhere down there we need to get down there so um, what we'll do is we need to code this elevator to move so in order for the elevator to move first thing we need to do is add a box trigger to the elevator that is like a control it tells our, our player that we can control this elevator right so let's add a box collision box collision and then you want to scale it up just almost the same size as your um, elevator but I'm gonna con call it the control trigger and we're gonna scale it almost the same size as that elevator now, if your if your things are not um, sliding like that, snapping, just make sure you turn off your snap up here so you can slide it. But regardless, we need to add the next thing we need to add is an arrow. So to add an arrow, so we know which way the elevator is facing at all times. And what we can do here is bring this arrow up so it's not. Um, we don't want it to be. We don't want to be confused with the other arrow. See, now we got that. Perfect. Now, when the player walks into this control trigger, we need to give the player the control of this elevator, right? So let's go to the event graph and click on your control trigger. And then on the right-hand side, scroll down, and you're going to find begin overlap. And the other actor is going to be the third-person character. So when the third person character overlaps it, we need to enable their input for this elevator. But the only way we can do that is get the player's controller. So get player controller. And then um, enable input. All right, so hook this up to that. Leave the target as self, but hook up the player controller to the player's controller, get player controller. Um, so now the player has control over the elevator when they walk into that trigger box. Um, we haven't given them, you know, anything to do when they get control, but now they have control over it. Uh, what we should do is we can set up a variable that tells this uh, blueprint that the player has control or that the player can control. So can control, question mark, leave it as a boolean, that's fine. Save. So we'll set that at the end of that to true because now they can control now when they leave this uh, trigger box we need to disable the input of this elevator so click on your control trigger scroll down and say end overlap and want to get third person character cool and we're gonna just get from here disable input but if you see how it's hooked up to the target? Just hold control and hook it up to the player controller. You know, that's a little trick. It makes you go faster. 
anyways uh, the self is the target there and we need to set can control to uh, false what the fuck is that noise okay so now the player has control when they walk into the trigger but we haven't told the control what to do so the next thing that we need to do is we need to set up some kind of like up and down and that the way, the way that we'll do this is pretty simple first things first let's press comment or C to comment all of that and say control box or control trigger perfect and we'll come back to this in a second. We may need to add more to it. Um, we'll see. Probably not. But let's see. The next thing we need to do is the up and down. So let's make a down because that's going to be our first direction. If you see, this elevator starts up and we need it to go down. Now, one thing about adding the arrow, look, I can see the elevator is faced in the wrong direction. Let's spin it around here. Perfect. Alright, so we want it to go down first, so let's click, double click on your blueprint, and when the player presses, when the player presses the down key, that's what we're going to do. So, type in keyboard, down, and you'll get this one right here. And then you can also type in keyboard up, and you'll get that one. So we're going to code these up here. So when the player presses down or when the player presses up, we will need the elevator to do, you know, go down or up. So the first thing we're going to do is down. And we're going to say if the player can control, right, put that in a branch. If the player can control it, then we want the elevator to go down. So we're going to set can control anyways if the player can control we want to set can control to false because the, the elevator is going to be moving and we don't want them to be able to control the elevator while it's moving so we're going to set it to false then we need to actually move the elevator and in order to do that we're going to add a timeline. So right click and add a timeline. And on this timeline, here, let's move this out the way so you can see more. But on this timeline, we can um, double click on it and add a track, which is a float track. We'll call it move. The length is how long you want the elevator to take between, uh, to move to, you know, your destination. So in this case, I'm gonna say like four seconds right and then on the first float track so we need to add a key so right click and add a key double click on this key or you don't have to but look up at the time and press zero for the time and for the value we also want it to be zero so that's good now we need to add another key so right click add a key for the time you want the time to match the length so for me I set mine to four so I must also set it to 4 and the value this time we want it to be 1 Bow. alright cool so basically your little timeline should look like it goes like this Boop. alright now that that's done we can close that down we don't need to do anything here we can connect this down to play because we want it to play we want it to, the elevator to move but we, the elevator doesn't know how to move so let's grab the move here and say lerp vector this way we could tell the elevator which two vectors to move between A and B it'll be able to move when it plays forward it'll move from A to B if it plays in reverse it'll move from B to A so in that case let's make both A and B variables so right click promote to variable we'll call this one the start and also right click the B promote the variable and we'll call this the end if you have multiple elevators in your world then what you want to do is make sure that end 
point in, um, is public so you can change that around in the world cool so now that you got the lerp vector what you want to do is uh, this plane right here we need to set the relative location of the plane after it moves so that we can you know move it back up so set relative location boom and that's going to be on the update so hook that up to the update and the return value of that location will be the A and the B. Now for us, we know that when we press down, we want the elevator to go to a certain endpoint. Um, we can control it from the outside, but in this case, we know where we want it to go. And I'll show you. The elevator is sitting right here at 950 Z. So let's make it go down 949, right? right? So it's right above the ground. So we'll say minus nine four nine. And that should put it right above the ground when we press down. However, what we need to do now is we need to say what happens when this is finished. And when it's finished, we need to give the player um, control again. So set can control back to true. And that's pretty much what we need to do there. Now what we need to do is set up the up. So same same process. When the player presses up, we need to do a check, so branch, and make sure that they can control. If they can control, we need to set can control. Oops. We need to set can control to false because the elevator will be moving. However, this time, instead of hooking this up to play, we're just going to hook this one up to reverse and that way the elevator will move in reverse and that's literally all you have to do there so now what we can do is we can actually go into the world and test out our elevator to make sure that at least it can move right so we walk in here we should have control if we press down the elevator should start moving down four seconds we'll get to the ground perfect and if we press up we should go right back up to the starting point But, but it's not going nowhere so we did something wrong in the up here so let's check out this up here set can control to true okay so here's the error make sure that your control trigger is hooked up to your plane so I want everything to be underneath this plane so let's try that one more time here and let's let's make sure that was the error. So we walk over here, bop bop bop. We can control it. We press down. We're moving down. We can't move it until we get down. And now we can press up. Yeah. So that was the problem. Everything is fixed, and now we've got a working platform. You can't call that an elevator because an elevator has doors that open. So let's make the doors that open next. So in order to do that, what you do is double click on your elevator and let's comment this as the up down right here up slash down Bow. so we know what that is so we got the control trigger up and down all right next thing we need to do is let's make sure this elevator is front facing and let's add some doors so on the plane we're going to add a static mesh which could be a cube so add this cube here and we're going to move it right up here to the front and you know what you want to do is make it slim oops not that slim make it kind of slim like an elevator door right all right cool and then you're gonna move it over here so we're gonna move it about halfway over here and bow so seven and a half you can actually do math to get this perfect but this is a tutorial so I'm not about to get it perfect I don't even again my game Pokemon I did the, I sat down for a second I did the math and I got it perfect but here let's just make it a door you feel me so this door will come over here it's a pretty tall door um, and then we can make another static mesh basically you can just copy that same one over so add a cube 
and this time the cube is going to be here now you need to name these cubes so this cube first one is going to be left door left door and this one's going to be right door okay and also you can take these dimensions here and just say copy and paste right so we're going to copy the location paste <laughs> We're going to take this, we're going to copy the rotation, which is zero, we don't need that. So we can copy the scale, but let's move it, whoops, let's move this one where we want it, about right there, and then paste the scale, wow, so there you go. So like I said, you could really use math to get this super nice and it'll be so tight but I'm gonna do this, I'm just leave a little seam right there just cause that's, I feel like that's an elevator door right alright now that we've got our left door and our right door what we need to do is on the plane again um, so the left door should be hooked up to the plane and the right door should also be hooked up to the plane Okay. Um, now on the plane we need to add a box trigger so add a box collision and this one's going to be called our door trigger and move that right in front of the doors leaving a little gap though like you know a small gap and we'll make it so that the player comes in contact with this like bow compile and save and on the right hand side we'll say on component begin overlap so the other actor is the third person character third person character when they overlap that we want to see if the doors are open or not so let's make a variable called doors open question mark so if the doors are not open we're going to open the doors basically branch So if the doors again are not open, then we need to open the doors, and if the doors are open, we don't want to do anything. Um, so let's, before we move on, we need to create a way to open the doors, so we need to create like an open door function or something like that, but let's do the end overlap of this door trigger before we do that. So the end overlap down here, same thing, it's going to be the third person character we need to do a check um, if they can open the, if the doors are open and this time if the doors are open then we need to close the doors so we will do two functions here open doors and close doors so for the first one open doors let's set up a custom event so custom event and we'll call this open doors And before you move on, what you can do is right here at this top one, like we said, if it's false, we want open doors to be called. So now that's set up. Now you can also make another custom event called closed doors. And here we said that if it's true, we want the doors to close. If the doors are open, we want them to close. Bow beautiful the only problem is that we don't have these functions set up they don't do anything so we gotta make them do something so on open door function let's open these doors this is how we're gonna do it we got our left door and we got our right door right so we're gonna say first thing is we want this to happen one time so do once that's a good fail safe to have and then you can have a sequence because we need the left and the right door to do something. First thing is we want to move the component to. You'll get this one right here. And which component do we want to move? I uh, say let's move the right door. Right? Move this right door. But where do we want to move it? That's the that's the good question. So what we need to do is get the relative location of the right door. So relative location 
we need to get the relative look uh, rotation rotation now hook the relative rotation up to the target rotation but the location what we need to do is we need to add we need to minus 30 or we need to subtract 30 from it so um, but we want to subtract 30 in the Y because we want it to move sideways so hook that up to your relative location Bow. so that should be the right door moving correctly after that you want to set the doors to open so get your doors open and set it to true and then after that you want to drag this all the way back to the reset button so that it resets now let's set up our then one so then one we also want to move component to and this time the component we want is the left door so hook your left door right on up and we're going to do the same thing kind of so get uh, relative location and rotation Um, now to the location of this left door we just minus 30 for that one so this time we have the plus 30 so let's say plus 30 <laughs> I'm using elementary words minus and plus add and subtract you know what I mean anyways bow that should be good right there uh, but make sure this hooks back up into doors open so let's now set up our closed doors because that's that's looking good let's comment this is open doors i don't know if i spelled that right or not open doors i <laughs> know i didn't spell that right <laughs> anyways let's do the closed doors so same thing here let's say do once and then we need a sequence and then on the do on the den zero we'll say move component to and the component that we want is the right door and the same thing let's get the um, relative rotation and hook that up and for the relative location this time we're gonna say plus 30 Uh, so get the relative location and we're going to say plus or add 30 in the Y so this is just doing the opposite of what we did up top you know why because we just want this to do the opposite and close the doors so after that you want to um, set the doors open so right here set doors open to false and then go back to the reset so let's do that same thing down here. So move component two. This time we want to do it with the left door, um, and we'll do the opposite of what we did all the way up here at the other at the other one. So we'll get relative location and rotation. Um, rotation hooks right on up, but the location we're going to have to for this one we're going to have to um, subtract thirty. So I think in the in the top one we added 30 so we'll have to subtract 30 here. Let me see. And when we open the doors the bottom one it was add 30 exactly. So this should be right as long as we hook this up to doors open it's not true everything's good. So C comment that out and say doors close. bow so now we've got our doors open and our doors closed uh, that should be pretty much it right there watch so let's test it out so our elevators looking nice yeah and move this guy back here like this press play and um, let's walk in here so 30 is a little bit, you know, it, it did move 30, right? 30 is just a little bit too small. So this is where we're going to have to make those tweaks. So let's take this elevator number and this 30, let's change it to 50, right? 
Everywhere you see the 30 in the open and closed doors, we'll change it to 50. All right. Um, ooh, one other thing is though, let's do this so that the player has time to get inside of the elevator. When you do this one right here, end, let's give it a delay delay for about I don't know 1.5 maybe okay another thing that we can do is because those elevator doors were just sliding open so fast uh, let's look at our door open look at this over time this is how fast the doors were open so I'm gonna make mine say 1.5 so I like that speed that's a nice casual speed for elevator and then same with the down down here in the bottom when you close the doors 1.5 and 1.5 all right so doors closed doors open perfect now let's test it out we've got it going 50 did we change the 50s down here to 50 50 50 ooh. yeah 50 and 50 perfect let's go ahead and play <laughs> cool so obviously for me 50s it's cool but it's not it's not ideal but that's what we want it to do we want the doors to open just like a ping and you could play a sound or whatever you want when that happens but I mean let's kind of want to get mine perfect real quick so let's just say a hundred one hundred everywhere All right, um, and and then another thing you can do before we go back out there and test it out, um, let's go to our viewport here, and let's add some more static meshes here. So to your plane, let's add another plane, and you know you can make this seven by seven because you know we want this to be the roof, and you know how how big it is. So seven by seven, which okay, that's this a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit excessive. Let's go back to one <laughs> by one. Okay, yeah, so we want it to be the same size, sorry. Not seven times bigger. But what one thing you do want is it to be flipped. Because that's see-through. So let's flip that. Bop, bop, bop. Perfect. And just bring it up. So this is the elevator ceiling. And maybe you want another plane for like uh, the the walls and stuff like that, right? So let's add another plane, and we're gonna make this scale one by one, and this time we're gonna put it as the back wall. So flip it up this way, pop pop ninety and flip it around because planes are see-through on one side if you didn't know that move it back there's your back wall and now you can add some side walls so plane let's also let's add another plane make it seven by s or jeez that's so loud make it one by one and then just remember that the plane is see-through on the other side so you want this side to be the see-through side about make this the wall and then we're gonna add one more plane to the original plane so plane um, and we'll add the plane so sorry I don't know what, what I, I just got like a brain fart right there. I was like, what was happening? <laughs> okay, so here, and we'll flip this one up 90 degrees, flip it, pop up, and move it into place. So now you got a whole elevator here. Um, one thing though is usually elevators, they'll come with lights on the inside. So maybe you want to add a light. So add a little light in here. 
Let's see. Oh, they got the light. Uh, point light. Cool. Right? Um, boop, boop. Move that up a little bit. Uh, and then you can make these walls. If you started with the starter content, you can just make the walls chrome. Right? Elevator style. Um, and then we'll do the ceiling as something else. Like, uh, sheesh, let's try a basic floor ceiling. Okay, and then the floor as something else. Like, um, let's see what they got for floor. Yeah, nice, some wood. <laughs> so there you go, there's an elevator right there. Here's our doors, let's make our doors chrome. Bop, and the other door chrome. And one thing you wanna do is make sure that you save everything that you've been working on so it doesn't crash on you. Compile, save. And now we've got a great looking elevator that should work perfectly. Say, so walk up to it, the door's open. Oh, come on inside. Perfect. The doors are going to close now. Um, the doors are going to close now. The doors didn't close. So we need to look at our closed door function real quick. You just got to make sure your doors are attached to your plane. You should do this while you're in the viewport, though, so just in case anything changes. All right. So that 100 number is probably going to be a little bit excessive right now because we attached it to the plane, and it's saying relative to the plane how, how much is it going. 100 is going to fly off the roof. See? So let's set it all the way back to 30 or 50, and then we'll be done. I'm going to end the tutorial right then and there. You dig. Wow. Okay. 30 I found to be pretty nice for me. Um, but I'm glad I showed you these troubleshooting things just in case you run into any snacks. So, let's try it one more time. Open. Perfect. All right, see, there we go. See, there's a little bit messed up there. So wh what happened there is it didn't close. So we opened it, waited to go in. It should wait 1.5 seconds, and then it closes. But the closing is not happening. And I don't know if that's because it's not updating the save. Let's try it one more time. All right, save, open. Walk out that box, wait 1.5 seconds. It closes. I think it was just because I didn't save. Press down, you see that we're moving, moving, and then when it gets down to the bottom, it should open the doors. So this is one thing that we should add. So <laughs> I said I was going to be done, but down when it gets to the bottom, let's make it open the doors. So when it's finished. We'll just also call that open door function. And this is, remember, in our up down. So it's when the timeline is finished. Last try. So I'm going to save everything, save all, play, walk into it, wait, uh, walk into it some more. The door should close. Perfect. Press down. The elevator is moving. The door's open. Bing! walk out and the doors should close perfect <laughs> so there's an elevator right there walk in about we can go back up and this is how you do like an elevator that's pretty good only thing is I, I'm having a little bit of trouble with this closing door thing so I'm gonna have to work on my, my doors closing but uh, other than that I think what's happening is just my trigger box here is a little too slim my uh, door trigger that's the one it's a little too slim Let's fatten it up a little bit. And let's try that. Yeah. But you fix it up however you want. 
but I just wanted to show you guys how to make a really cool elevator that has the doors opening and you can press down and up to control you know how the elevator goes where it goes get off the elevator leave that and it's gonna close the doors walk back up open the doors go back in I should have ended it when it worked successful, huh? Go in. Alright, so here's what we'll do. If you're having problems like I'm having problems, then let's fix it. I think what's happening is that delay when you end uh, the trigger box here, this delay. I'm going to take this delay and move it before the branch here, and that hopefully can fix my problem. There we go. Yeah, hopefully that we won't run into any more problems there. That should fix it. Like, come on, man. Right? Bop. Open. Bop. Close. Ding. Down. <laughs> bop open walk out close oh yeah walk in open walk in close bing up ah <laughs> yeah all right this is perfect that was the problem y'all sorry about that walk out and they're gonna close and there's the elevator working perfectly Yo, if you have any other questions or comments, hit me up in the uh, comments down below. Other than that, man, I thank y'all for your time today. And cool, we just made a dope elevator. Um, stay creative. I'll holla at y'all next time. Peace.